<laughs> so tell us your name and who you're with. I'm Winifred McGee. I'm with Penn State Cooperative Extension. I work out of the Lebanon County office here in Cooperative Extension. Terrific. And, and, and the reason I'm here, I heard about this great program that you're involved in, Food for Profit. <laughs> so tell us about that. What, what's that all about? Food for Profit is one of the classes that I've actually been teaching for a long time, uh -huh. oh, but really? has sort of had a renaissance in recent years uh -huh. for a number of different reasons. It is really a class to teach people who are interested in setting up food businesses exactly mm. how they might be able to go about doing it. Restaurants or? All kinds of food Anything businesses. Anything to do with food. Huh? Right. Wow, wonderful. We originally were targeting farmers who wanted to add value to uh -huh. their agricultural products yes. because if you know anything about Cooperative Extension and yes. the system with the land grant universities across the nation, one of our primary and original audiences right was and still is right. farmers right. and so there are a number of farmers who want to add diversity to what they provide there are a lot of farmers who are interested in direct marketing their mm -hmm. food products rather than selling it through an intermediary mm -hmm. as they may have done in the past because they'll retain more of the food dollar on right. the farm right. that way and so we developed food for profit for a number of different reasons it was originally part of a suite that we had of basic classes, business yeah. classes. Yeah. We had a sewing and crafts for profit. Oh, really? Wow, that's cool. Yeah. Ins and outs of bed and breakfast, spelled oh, I-N-N-S. Really? <laughs> um, You're as tacky as I am. <laughs> and uh, a, a class that we had for people who wanted to set up daycares in their home oh, and I the business see. aspect of setting up yeah. daycares because it's a very low yes. profit margin type of enterprise there. Are you still doing those classes too? No, no. all of those fell away. Right. Yeah. So now it's just food for profit. Food for profit yeah. is the one that has stayed and probably because it has the closest link to the agricultural community, right. it's food right. and part and of And this is like farmers see. market stuff and all that? Yes, uh -huh. yes. Uh, primarily the idea behind food for profit is someone will come in having started a business or thinking about starting a food mm -hmm. business we talk to them about the realities usually have someone who has been successful in getting their I business see. going uh -huh. come and give a short kickoff speech right. to everybody and answer questions about what he or she has experienced in setting up their food business mm -hmm. then we have them talk to a regulator we bring in somebody from Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture I see who so if you're going to grow food you have to do it the right way you mean well or your sell food in right Pennsylvania yeah. actually there are a number of things that people can make in their home and can, oh, ha and can be licensed to be a food manufacturer for in their home oh. and so those like are what? Uh, not potentially hazardous foods. Right. <laughs> that means um, a lot of baked goods, uh -huh. but not cream pies. Any I type see. of baked good that would not need refrigeration after ah, it's made. I see. Jams so you can jellies. make these at home and then sell them wherever you want. Right. Uh -huh. uh, along with the baked goods, they can make mm -hmm. jams and jellies. They can make herbal mm -hmm. mixtures. Uh, hmm. They can make various products as long as it has a very low pH, so that they can. What's the pH? <laughs> it's, it's very acidic. I'm dumb. I see, right? <laughs> as long as uh -huh. it's acidic enough so that bacteria will not be able to grow I in see, it and will right. not be able to live in it. As long as it tests well in relation mm -hmm. to pH, then mm -hmm. they can make that type of product too. But there's a list that Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture's mm -hmm. Bureau of Food Safety has of types of products that can be made. And in that the varies maybe by state by state? In some states, they people can make things like that in a home uh -huh. kitchen. In other states, they must go to a commercial kitchen in order I to see. make it. Right. We've been teaching food for profit for the last year or so in Maryland, and oh, Maryland really? is huh. and Maryland is just now uh, mm -hmm. considering, but has not yet approved mm -hmm. a uh, cottage industry law, which would allow oh, people see. to make That's not potentially hazardous foods in a home kitchen. There, right now in Maryland. Mm -hmm. You can only make um, foods in a home kitchen if it is a kitchen that is associated with a farm. So a farm kitchen, oh. they can get a license to make a product that mm. is based on something that they grew. Right. They can I make see. pickles. Right. They can I make see. a few right. other things huh. based on... So you're on trying to get that legislation passed now to allow more options for people. There is legislation yeah. that is being considered right now in uh -huh. Maryland to be able to do it. Mm. We really don't have anything in, in yeah. cooperative extension to do with that right. legislation, but it certainly will open up more right. avenues for entrepreneurs down in Maryland to do things Do you too. feel that, uh, are there other cooperative extensions around the country that are teaching people about uh, food for profit kinds of things, maybe even under a different name? Are you aware of? Or what? 
I'm not aware of yeah. too much. And actually, I get phone calls. I've gotten phone calls yeah, in the last sounds... year from Florida uh-huh. and from California oh, really? huh? asking about the opportunity mm-hmm. with their land grants to right. get information about the same subject because they've seen our website and see. seen what we have to offer mm-hmm. in relation to the food for How profit. How many classes class. is it? Is it one class or it is one class? class. Right. It's a you six and a half tape hour. It put online. <laughs> Actually, I have just finished uh-huh. and I'm just about ready to launch with our e-learning at University yeah. Park a food for profit online I got some funds to be able Wonderful. to put it online so that those people yeah. in California and yeah. in Florida who That'd have contacted great. and people next door to me who yeah. just can't make the exactly. day when we have the class because right. that's why I'd love to put out and videotape it and put it on for you but if you have it that's great Wonderful. and and it's something that yeah. we of course had to put together in a way right. that right. will keep it educationally right. sound so it's not just right. a matter of local. videotaping what we're saying and mm-hmm. how we're saying it but really mm-hmm. we put together a good e-learning class mm-hmm. for people wonderful. to be able to participate in and as I said it's going to launch shortly yeah. so people wonderful. will be able okay. to sign up I'm, uh-huh. I'm hoping like for sure, next several hundred people I, I think so I, I, it'll I, be I, a, it'll at a certain time or it'll always be available it will be whenever people want to link in they will just sign in they will uh, sign up for the class <clears throat> and then they can go <laughs> as many times as they want I see. onto Wonderful. the website and uh-huh. uh, access the information but basically what we did is put together a, a series of modules mm, that are on yeah. that website so mm. that they can look at the legal aspects of right. setting up their business they can look at niche marketing right. and, and how to go about figuring out what mm-hmm. the target market will be they can look at packaging opportunities yeah. and what needs to go on the label right. and they also get a chance to test out their skills in putting mm-hmm. together a price that's going to ensure right. that they're going to make money, make money. <laughs> instead <laughs> of have a, an expensive <laughs> hobby yeah. basically Ah, oh, that's it. And you say within the next uh, few weeks, few months, or something like that, that should be up. I would think by the end of the summer, definitely. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, there have been terrific. a couple of delays yeah. simply because yeah. we're right. trying to fine tune right. things. Right. And uh, yeah. well, let me know because I'd be happy to promote that. I sure. think that that's wonderful to do that. Now, the people who come are, are they mostly because of your area, but like in Maryland, is it mostly all rural communities that are using this or no? No, actually, uh-huh. we've had very good. Uh, Response from people in Philadelphia. We had a session wow, no last kidding. year, last May, uh-huh. um, almost a year ago exactly. We had a session in in May at the Enterprise Center in Philadelphia, and we filled the room there. Okay, wonderful. Most of the rooms are filled for food for profit. Hmm. So, like in downtown Philadelphia, what what what, what kind of businesses do they have in mind? <laughs> uh, there are a lot of either packaged food products that they're considering uh-huh. or they are considering making something that they're going to be able to sell as a caterer or as a restaurant, uh, small scale restaurant right. that's the type of thing we have there but we have as I said a wide variety of people mm-hmm. who come so it has to be information in that one day workshop workshop yeah. that's generic yeah. enough okay. for Not everyone perfect. how many of those you've been putting on now um, well in the last year we have put on 12 Wow we have two yet to go before mm-hmm. I take a hiatus. Uh, <laughs> Rest at throat. <laughs> July, July uh, and August, uh-huh. we will not have any food for profit mm-hmm. workshops, mostly because people go on vacation, yeah. so we don't get a I mean, large sign up you anyway. Could fix up your uh, video too. Then. <laughs> and one of the things that I think is important about food for profit is it is an evolving workshop. Mm-hmm. What I teach I, today is not what right. I taught back in 1992 yeah. when I originally started teaching it. So 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. People were asking for different types of information. Oh. I well, what's the big changes that you see? Businesses have become more sophisticated, mm. and the types of things people are thinking about when they come to Food for Profit are different now than they were back in the beginning. With the sewing and crafts for profit and food for I profit, right. it was more of a thing of bringing in a little extra money into the, the household. doing this oh. or something like that. Yes, it was yeah. very close to our family and consumer science program yes. that we offered. Home and so, or, yeah. Yes. And so back then it was how you bring uh-huh. in extra money because somebody has told you you make wonderful cakes. So you're I going see, to start right. making yeah. birthday cakes for people. So now it's more yuppies want to make a buck or what? It's a variety of people, yeah. but they are responding to the demand for local yes. foods because there is an increasing demand for local foods. Well, I see that in every restaurant in D.C. You know, 
<laughs> and I, I think they're coming even up in Pennsylvania and getting their food for their restaurants. I imagine yeah. so. Research has shown that really they're looking, people are looking for food where yeah. it has a face to right. it, where they can identify who grew it, mm-hmm. how it was made, mm-hmm. and know that there are certain types of regulations yeah. and stipulations in yeah. relation to the food. So they feel more food security in relation to that. Yeah. There are also people who are concerned about the um, carbon footprint mm-hmm. right. of their food product. Yeah. And so right. if they get something that hasn't traveled yeah. many miles to get to their dinner right. table, they're helping like about Brazil. that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. And then on the other side, we have a lot of people who are coming because we have people who are underemployed or I unemployed. See. And we have those farmers that I talked about I see, earlier yes. who want to change how mm-hmm. they bring in money and want mm-hmm. to direct market. So there's more mm-hmm. of a demand from a wider range of people. One of the things I've noticed is that people who have special food needs come to Food for Profit as well. So they could grow their own food? Or is that Not so no. much grow their own food, but if you have someone with celiacs, for instance, and is, is, is uh, they, they must have a gluten-free diet. I see. Uh-huh. So if they have a sensitivity to gluten mm-hmm. and they have developed certain products that taste really good to them and people have complimented to them on them that use uh-huh. rice flour, for uh-huh. instance, then they'll come to Food I for see. Profit to learn how to create a business so that they can uh-huh. make foods for other people with the same challenge. Mm-hmm. So we have people with food allergies that come. We have people who, God, have, dis- yeah. we have, people who have decided uh-huh. on other ways of eating. Uh, vegetarians and mm-hmm. vegans will come to the class because wow. they have made these products yeah. that they enjoy uh-huh. and they want to sell them to other people who uh-huh. are eating in the same way uh-huh. as they. So in fact, we even go to the point in our classes of, as they register, asking them if they have any special dietary needs. Mm. And then when it comes lunchtime, there is a lunch that is available to them oh, really? that they I see. can so you eat. Feed, huh? Is so, there? A, so is this a all day class or what? It is an all day class. No kidding! Wow. Oh, it, so this is serious stuff. <laughs> it runs from nine to four. Wow. I see. Well, that I, I was. I don't know why in my mind I had an hour or two or something. Well, well, well that, um, this is wonderful. Yeah. It's a lot of information yeah. in that period of time. Of yeah. course, I is emphasize the business what? plan. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. there is a cost. What's the cost? It's consistently forty dollars. Forty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it costs you more for coffee <laughs> for the day. Well, that's terrific. Yeah. I think you've talked to people yeah. from Cooperative Extension before, yes, and you right. understand that I because understand. we get that funding yeah. from that's, state, I just want federal, to know. and <laughs> local. Right. I mean, that's the biggest surprise. I think most people think that, you know, and. and See, I see forty dollars. I mean, there's some huckster like me out there, probably trying to sell courses, you know, for five hundred dollars or a thousand or something. We're here, that is available in our community that we don't know about. It, yeah. We keep it affordable because yeah. we want people to be able to yeah. come. There are some people who come to the class with the idea of setting up their food business, right. and after they hear the realities of it, yeah. they realize that it's but, not for them, well, that's cool. and they have spent forty dollars. For Absolutely. very valuable information Absolutely. that keeps them from spending thousands Absolutely. of dollars, either of their money or yes. getting a loan from someone else and then having yeah. to repay the loan yeah, with right. whatever money they information can come. Information is so powerful to me that way because then yeah, you stop. See, knowing not to do something is just as important as how to do it because <laughs> then you can get on with your life to something that is more practical for you. And that is one of our educational yeah. outcomes. Uh, we don't like to think that everybody Everybody's is going to be, be a, dissuaded and not uh-huh. everybody is dissuaded right. from starting their business, but some people will decide uh-huh. not to go into business. Some people will decide that there are more things that they need to accomplish before they go into business. They learn about serve safe classes, for instance, Mm -hmm. and how to be receive more training so that they can prepare the food. What was that class? Serve safe. Serve safe, like serving the food? Yes. The waiter? Serving it safe so you don't Ah, so you have those classes? Extension does. Really? Yes. We we offer it here. It is actually a national Restaurant Association class, uh-huh. but we in Pennsylvania do offer through Cooperative Extension uh, Serve uh-huh. Safe classes so that people can come, learn the well, appropriate I methods see. to protect the food and make sure that their food products are as safe as they can be. Right. And so they may decide because they need Surf Safe certification, they're going to right. have to hold off a little bit. I see. They may find out that they're going to need certain liability right. insurance right. and they need to get the yeah. money for that liability right. insurance they'll have to have certain tests on some of their products before they can be introduced uh, is that a day long class too the surf safe or what is it surf safe is if one has not gone to a surf safe class before i believe they have to come to three sessions I see. and then the fourth session is the 
um, test that uh -huh. they must take. I see. And they must pass the test with at least an 80% uh -huh. in I order see. to like receive their license. certification. Yeah. But if you go yeah. into any restaurant or any other eating establishment, you may see posted on the wall oh, a cert safe oh, no kidding. Cert yeah. certificate because uh -huh. that's an important piece yeah. of making sure that the public's safe. Yeah. And the food that they are that they consume away from home, yeah. as well as the food that goes. And you're into saying their a lot of the food for profit, you may or may not have to have that surf safe certificate. Is that in almost all cases, if they're going to sell food for the public, they will have to have some type of certification in food safety. Uh -huh. There are other certifications beyond surf safe, safe, but that is the one that's mm -hmm. predominantly used yeah. by people yeah. here in, in Pennsylvania. And you can take that at the county cooperative extension service too, yeah. Yes, yes, uh -huh. you can get those classes as well through yeah. cooperative extension or there are many of uh, many community colleges oh, I of see. which huh. I'm aware yeah. who also offer. Mm -hmm. So you just look for serve right. without the E on the end of it. I it's serve uh, S C R V, huh? Safe. Safe. And safe. I have safe. safe. I don't know why I have safe. to have to. Okay. And so they may find that there are some steps that they need uh -huh. to take before they really get started. Uh -huh. I really encourage them, and one of the main purposes of Food for Profit is to help them work through a feasibility study before uh -huh. they go like into a business the business plan. Kind plan. Of thing? Yes. We actually uh -huh. have the business oh. plan workbook, oh, which really? is part of the packet. Uh -huh. It's very low tech. Yeah. It is fill well, in the blank and collect through. your information. Yeah. And then we refer them on to a University of Minnesota website, which is called um, Ag Plan, where they can go and create an account and uh -huh. start working on a business plan. And it is an online tool that is provided. So that's a business plan for in the food business. There is the opportunity to do a retail business, a mm -hmm. food business, a farming oh, okay. business, oh, and also mm -hmm. a um, huh. marine fisheries <laughs> business because some of the funding came from a fisheries um, to do opportunity that to do at that the to, yeah. to create that online tool. Uh -huh. But that's so you. The, your plan here that the students get uh, gives the information that then they plug in to the University of Minnesota one that right. develops this plan and then they could use that for their banker or their whatever they help. I hope they'll use it every day. Uh -huh. I hope they'll refer to it because business plan is really much more uh -huh. than a loan seeking mm -hmm. tool. A business plan gives the goals and objectives mm -hmm. that you want to accomplish it, yeah. and every time a new opportunity comes up you can evaluate yeah, it right. against those goals and objectives that you set and decide whether you're going to change your goals and move right. with that new opportunity or whether you're going to stay so becomes, with those goals. If you fill this out initially, that becomes your mentor for the rest of the life of the business in a way that you have to think through that. Sometimes Absolutely. it's hard because something pops up and you fire drill and having this. Oh, that's terrific. Absolutely. I it that way. And yeah. that's very much what my message yeah. is to the people who come to the class, yeah. that they are starting to work on this plan. Right. They are looking and seeing if it's going to be possible, if there is yeah. going to be a market for whatever right. they have to offer, if there is already a market that is right. saturated, and how they're going to be able to stand out and be different. So it shows them how to get the data for that stuff, too? There is some information yeah. there, and certainly with cooperative extension and we link in with small business development centers uh -huh, see, and right. have their co that. consultants <laughs> yeah, right. uh, as well mm -hmm. um, people can after the yeah. day go away and, and start working on their data. individual business ventures yeah. uh, I often tell them that we will answer certain questions but we'll probably create more questions for them yeah. while they're there during the day than we can ever answer mm -hmm. we do keep the classes fairly small mm -hmm. we about do how many uh, around 30 oh wow I really don't like too many more yeah. than 30 because then I really can't hear yeah. what people have to say and what? I think one of the most important <laughs> things about food for profit is that I'm constantly listening to what they have to say, mm -hmm. what they need, and we build it into food for profit. It mm -hmm. That's why I say it's an evolving class. Yeah. People, one day per, a person asked me over in Bethlehem about the psychology of colors in relation to right. packaging their food. Hi. And I said, I don't know a lot about yeah. that. And they said, well, there's been a lot of research. Yeah. So I did some research, and now we have a component. Oh, really? Both so, in, that's mm -hmm. <laughs> in, so in under this thing, a lie is going to take some time. <laughs> right. We talk about the different colors yeah. and how people will respond to colors in the packaging itself or on the label. Yeah. Because, again, in research, they yeah. show that about... 
22% on average of the cost of a food product goes into the packaging and labeling of that product. Wow. 22%. No. 22% on average. Mm, and there are I'm some products that I show in my class that I, I'm sure yeah. used far more than that 22% right. because it's very ornate or very specific it's, packaging. Yeah. And then there's some very plain packaging that people use very effectively. Mm -hmm. But package is, is an important yeah, thing. And that. so... Uh, yeah, just in asking visual. them asking that one question, yeah. I started doing some research and building it into food for profit. Last year we started too building in risk management uh, because there are risks that people incur when a food when a product is ingested that other businesses don't have if their product is yeah. just simply something that is used and mm -hmm. never becomes part of the consumer. Right. And so work through a good bit of research like in relation that. to that. I mean, people get sick eating it? Or what? Well, there, there's foodborne illness, I and there, is a, there are oh. many instances of yeah. foodborne illness, and some of them aren't registered anywhere simply because somebody thinks that they have right. the 24-hour bug. Mm -hmm. You don't get the 24-hour bug or the 24-hour flu. It's usually <laughs> something due to something that you ate, some mm -hmm. type of food handling problem or uh -huh. something in the product itself. Hence the food safe. Huh? <laughs> and serve safe. safe. Yeah, that's right. Hence serve safe. Yeah. So uh, last year we built in a fairly strong component in our uh -huh. day-long workshop about the risks that people take yeah. in putting a food product into the marketplace mm -hmm. and five different strategies that they can use to mitigate some of those risks. We start, like. we start out in the field with gap and gip which is agri good agricultural practices, good handling practices. That is that farmers do certain things mm -hmm. to make sure that there are clean hands, mm -hmm. clean water, clean mm -hmm. soil, mm -hmm. clean surfaces. Wow. So when they're growing and they're picking yeah. and they're Perfect. packaging wow. lettuce, they know how that has been right. grown and they can ensure that it's the safest product mm -hmm. possible. So we do gap and gip. When we get into the kitchen, we have HACCP, Hazard Analysis Critical <laughs> Control Points. <laughs> A jargon error. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and HACCP uh -huh. is finding those critical control points, those points when you take a temperature and make sure that it has gotten up to a certain temperature, it's cooled down quickly enough, whatever uh, else to safeguard yeah. the food of the, of the pro product. Uh, well, that's terrific um, stuff. We talk about allergen notification because there are eight major I food see. allergens. And huh, if I say have to tell it, people that this stuff is in there, huh? Not only in there, but if it's in the kitchen, oh, cross contamination. So huh. we have to talk about. I'm sure you've seen food products that, in recent years, since legislation was passed, have this product yeah, made exactly. in a factory right, where right. tree nuts ah, and peanuts are present. Yeah. That is part of what even wow. small food manufacturers need to do. Make sure that, especially mm -hmm. if they're sharing a kitchen with several yeah, others, right. if they're in a shared right. kitchen incubator someplace and developing mm -hmm. their product, they make sure that people know that other mm -hmm. products may have given the chance of cross-contamination. We talk about setting up a recall plan and testing oh, goodness, it out yeah. right uh -huh. from the start yeah. so that you know that you have lot numbers on each uh -huh. batch so if wow. something goes wrong you don't have to pull I back see. everything and lose your money Oh, good idea! Yeah. Uh, so that you can check and see yeah. how things have been processed and and where they are and testing it out to see how much it's going to cost you if you do have to do a recall uh -huh. and finally we talk about insurance as the umbrella that covers see, everything right. else when you've when done really those other up. four <laughs> the fifth one yeah. so we touch on all of yeah. those during oh, this great stuff. six and a half hour do yeah. workshop too Wow. To make well, sure people are covered. Now, what with kind of, about uh, this. Do you have any favorite stories, like of somebody who came to class and thinking about it and what they're doing now, or something like that? You know what I mean? There are a number of people yeah. who actually have been able to take food for profit and make small businesses for themselves. Yeah. We can't really point to anybody who yeah. is making massive amounts of no, product. No, just to doing something that they're happy with and doing, and you know, that just uh, anybody that you relate to. I, and and of course. Part of cooperative extension is that when we work with people, we don't talk about names, we don't I, right, talk about no, locations. I don't names or we did sense. have an individual, a gentleman who had a seasoning product that mm. his family had used. It uh -huh. was an ethnic seasoning product that they had used for many years and they wanted to share with the right. rest of the world. Uh, yeah. And he came to Food for Profit, found out what he was going to need to do in relation to setting up his business, what the regulations would be, everything mm. else. He determined that he really did need to go into a shared kitchen to begin with uh -huh. because it wasn't something he was going to be able to do in his home kitchen right. for certain reasons. And a shared kitchen would allow him to expand to the size of market mm -hmm. demand he hoped he would right. have. 
he's been able to set up, he's been able to work, and he had a good bit of business background, I mm -hmm. think, but not in food business necessarily. Mm -hmm. He's been able to set up and package a food product. He goes to uh, festivals and oh. m ensures that other people <laughs> have the seasonings yeah. out beside their french fry stand right. he and although it's principally a seasoning product for meat but it goes well on french, french fries fry. too he has gone to fancy food shows and been able to keep his product mm. going and so he was able to turn that product into a nice yeah. unique product yeah. has the advantage of being able to share what his family has right. enjoyed with well, that's a, other other right. people so there's a satisfaction yeah. there um, will he make Millions, yeah. probably not. He's doing but, something he loves. Eh? <laughs> and, and that's something that we talk about yeah. in Food for Profit, too. We, when I talk about pricing your food product, mm -hmm. and we go through an example and show showing how j jars of apple butter that you want to sell for $10, because mm. it's really special apple right. butter, and everybody says, you know, $10 a jar for apple butter, I don't yeah. be able to make a lot of money right. on this. We show how, as you take the fixed cost, and then you take those variable costs of it right. and put them all in place if that's your only product so it's covering all the cost of doing business mm -hmm. as well as the product costs themselves probably going to be hard pressed mm -hmm. to make a profit it, yeah. until you have sold at least 300 jars Jar a month <laughs> and yeah. 300 jars a month that's of a, a brand lot. new product yeah. right. where there's competition because other people right. are making apple butter is a challenge and so we start talking about well how much profit do you really mm -hmm. want to make obviously 301 yeah. they're going to now make four dollars and fifty right. cents in the example mm -hmm. would that be enough to suit you after you've put together 300 jars mm -hmm. of apple butter in your right. kitchen all of this time or how much are you really looking for what mm -hmm. do you want to get out of this business is it just a sa right. satisfaction or is it some money yeah. and it's usually both yeah it's usually a matter of both but well, that's terrific. trying yeah. to help them come to terms with it right mm. off the top. So. No, I think that particularly this or whatever, I mean, to help people think mm -hmm. through what they really have in mind is probably the most important thing because we all have these crazy ideas we want to do and then mm -hmm. how do you get people the reality so they can attack the problem in a sensible way. Mm -hmm. Well, you're a wonderful okay. delight. Oh, you got something else you want to show me? One more thing. Okay, yeah. We do have a set of fact sheets that ah, everyone can go out wonderful. to the internet and uh -huh. pick up, which Good. gives them a little bit of taste of food for profit. Wonderful. Uh, okay, we'll put that on the website and everything. And your website, well, it's a long involved. I'll, I'll put it on so okay. people don't. Right. But well, this one great. is actually at a fairly short website. Uh -huh. Oh, it's it is. At PA Food Ventures. PA Food Ventures, uh huh. Oh, wonderful. Dot. Dot. PSU. PSU. Dot edu. Edu. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, PA Food Ventures. Dot PSU. Dot edu. Yes. You get all this free stuff, and when your next class is, right? Yes, the classes are listed yeah. there. There's a link to it so that people can go out and look right. at a summary at what, of what we're showing Wonderful. and see exactly where the location is and also is when the video register. and when the video comes out. Right? When the video, the e well, well, when the e-learning right. unit is available, right. when Food for Profit Online is available, yeah. we will have that out at that website as yeah. well, so people can click in and register and presumably. Enjoy our class. Wonderful. Well, awfully nice of you to be here. Okay. Isn't it terrific? Now, that's a great course. 